headlines. Let's uh, focus on the big headline of the day, uh, which essentially, of course, is the Supreme Court uh, terming the Feb 12 circle of the RBI unconstitutional. Uh, we've been getting your opinion from bankers, uh, industry experts, and uh, more. Cyril Shroff is now joining us. He's managing partner at uh, Cyril Amarjan Mangaldas, and he's with us to discuss what he thinks would be the implications. Mr. Shroff, uh, Shroff thank you very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Sir, uh, first up, your first thoughts on the implications of what the court has said today. So two things. Firstly, uh, you know, I have not seen the judgment, so you will have to caveat all my thoughts on uh, just sort of essentially reacting to the media reports and not having seen the judgment. But three points I would make. The first I would say is it's a, it's a significant development uh, because it sort of really uh, sort of takes away one key factor in the entire stressed assets conversation because the 12 February circular was a major trigger in pushing cases to the N to the NCLT. So that's thought number one. But uh, two further sort of outcomes of this. Uh, does this mean that uh, cases will not be referred by the banks to the NCLT? And is there something that they can do voluntarily? In my opinion, I think the, the, the banks are perfectly within their rights to voluntarily refer to the cases to the uh, to the NCLT and to the IBC. They have tasted the benefits and the, uh, the sort of the, uh, the speed with which cases get resolved. Uh, so I expect that several banks will still continue to do voluntarily, which were otherwise they were forced to do under the 12th February circular. Sure. So it's premature for debtors to sort of rejoice that uh, the NBS, the NCLT process is uh, it, it has sort of disappeared. I think it's still very much there, and uh, it may it may now happen voluntarily, but there will always be uh, nuances around specific cases. So that's thought number one. Mm. Then uh, I think the we should have a more nuanced discussion about the provisioning norms that were set out in the circular. So if the entire circular has been struck down, as it seems to be, thought needs to be given to what happens now to the provisioning norms that were specifically prescribed under 12 February. And in my opinion, uh, at this stage, I think the RBI would be perfectly within its powers to uh, come up with a separate set of norms or circular to so, sort of to deal with this, because that is within the normal regulatory powers which the Reserve Bank has mm. uh, for regulating the, the, the banking sector. Yeah, Mr. Shroff, uh Mr. Shroff, may I interrupt you there? The uh, yes. provisioning norm uh, was not vastly different. It, all it said was that cases that went to NCLT, you have to make 50% provisioning. But that was applicable for the previous 40 cases as well, the 12 plus uh, 28 that were taken to NCLT. Uh, were the provisioning norms different? It was just as you aged, uh, uh, the provisions increased. Uh, were they vastly different under Feb 12? Not vastly different, but they were different in terms of the kind of compulsion that was there to sort of follow the rigor of the 12 February circular. So it's, I think that one could say that you're back to the status quo ante before that. Mm. And if RBI wants to tweak it uh, in the right light of the new scenario, I don't think this judgment would stand in its way. So the, I think the real implications of this, and we should not overstate it, is the the compulsion being taken away that after the 12 February circulars that affected one mm. day default six months and all of that that you have no choice but to go to uh, go to the NCLT so this gives a little bit more freedom and flexibility to both the debtors and the creditors to resolve the situation if such resolution makes more sense. But, uh, the Reserve Bank of India still has room to appeal this order at the Supreme Court. That remains no, an option. No, this is the Supreme Court, and you know, under our constitution, uh, the Supreme Court review, is supreme. A, a review bench. of the order is that a possibility? A bigger bench. Um, too early to say, but I would think not. Uh, you know, the other point brought about uh, from this ruling, and this is all verbal communication, we haven't seen the final order, is that the circular was issued under 35A and 35AB, uh, you know, of the Banking Regulation Act. That itself has been questioned. Does RBI have the power to direct lenders to take these actions under the IBC? That is something that was questioned by the petitioners. Do you think now that puts the light on what RBI directed lenders to do with the first 12 cases itself, uh, I mean, can the rears now go to court and say uh, it was ultra wires of RBI to direct lenders to take them to court? See, I think on this one we'll have to see the judgment whether it is so broad that it sort of questions the ability of 
the RBI to give directions on uh, on how to sort of conduct themselves. But I think we are reading too much into sort of anecdotes about the judgment without having seen the judgment itself. So I would be cautious in making any comment on that. Okay, because that okay. was uh, those judgments were yeah. th those cases somebody, were sent I mean, under the ordinance. Still have a go. Somebody may still have a go and kind of raise this point, but I frankly would read the judgment confined only to 12 February and not kind of have a more expansive interpretation to the very basis of RBI's jurisdiction to regulate the, the mm. sector. I think that's probably reading too much too mm. soon. Actually, I spoke to some of the bankers uh, in SBI and their reading also was this, that they are not mandated now to go to NCLT. That would be one of the options. And they also added that they would anyway prefer the NCLT because it's so difficult to get uh, all the bankers to agree outside, at least within the NCLT, it is only 66%. So it's actually an, uh, 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 an option of choice for them. But separately, do you think uh, the PNL of banks will change? I mean, those who, are, uh, who, who had mandatorily to be taken to IBC, the power companies, they would be NPAs anyway, isn't it, uh, 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 Mr. Shroff? There is no rewriting of provisioning, is there? I don't think so. Okay. Would you also assume that, uh, you know, the earlier schemes of restructuring at this point of time with FEP12 out of the window, uh, banks do not have an RBI-specified tool. Uh, so are they free to exercise SDR, CDR, 525? Does that come into play now? I think that would be a literal me. So it's, again, uh, let's see how the RBI reacts to this. But uh, just in terms of simplistic principles, when you strike down a circular, what happens is you get restored to status quo ante just before that. So mm. I think theoretically that's the right, uh, uh, right conclusion, but that's probably being too simplistic to say that, you know, you're just back to the original and you have all your S4A and SDR and all of that. So I, I think there will be probably something else that will fill this vacuum. Any other legal ambushes that we are missing? Not at the moment. I think uh, it's, it's a psychological blow more than a real. So I think the perception about this may be worse than the reality. Mr. Shroff, uh, this would uh, provide more time uh, for, to deal with the uh, cases on hand for banks and for debtors as well. But in your opinion, does this, uh, is, is this, you know, again, a top-down, uh, a better outcome uh, for, re for, the, for the resolution of these cases itself? Because some of the underlying issues of coal, PPA, DISCOM, health, etc., uh, are, are exactly how, what they were before. So I think it will be a case-by-case case. So there will be certain industry sectors or certain situations where IBC was not necessarily the best solution to start with and things could have been worked out consensually. So there I think this actually would help. But there would be a lot of cases where IBC is still the only real option and I think the banks will exercise that option voluntarily, more as a pull factor rather than as a push factor. You know, just clarifying this for, for our viewers once again, the case filed in the Supreme Court was from power shipping and sugar companies. But from what we've heard from the Supreme Court, it does seem sector agnostic, Mr. Shroff. That's what I've heard. But, you know, we're all talking in the air without seeing the judgment. Okay. <laughs> all right, but, it, but that would be the logical conclusion. That okay. is, it's sector agnostic because a circular is a circular. Okay. All right. All right. Mr. Shroff, we will get back to you after you and I are able to lay our hands on the judgment itself. Thank you very much for your initial comments. Uh, well, I just wanted to add that uh, talking to the bankers so far, their understanding is, I mean, they've also, none of them have read the judgment since it's not yet up on the website. Their understanding is that uh, now they're not mandatorily uh, forced to take uh, uh, stressed cases. And mind you, the mandate was only for cases above 2,000 crore yeah. and which were stressed as of February to, uh, uh, 2018. Only those cases, if you didn't resolve in six months, you had to take to NCLT. None of them were actually taken to NCLT because by then the court cases started and the NCLT was anyway backed up. So nobody had taken. A question of dragging cases out perhaps may not uh, rise. But there are cases like I think GMR uh, and a few which were taken. Uh, the initial filing for NCLT has yeah. come. Uh, perhaps over there, there is still a, a chance that they are resolved outside. But the bankers were vehement that even those eight cases of Samadhan, they have not been able to resolve. Ritu reported that only one of them has gotten resolved. So they said even without February 12, we would have taken the GMRs of the world to NCLT anyway. So according to them, it's uh, uh, status quo ante as far as 
those cases, no question of pulling out any case because they are very happy that uh, uh, cases that are in NCLT be in NCLT. The other thing they said about this S4A, SDR, they said they are not interested in any of those resolutions. Mm -hmm. As of now, uh, I, uh, I mean, this was, of course, initial of the cuff reaction. They are not interested in those schemes either. Either they are able to settle uh, sort of consensually or you sort of take them to NCLT voluntarily as Mr. That, that was the understanding. In fact, they're free to restructure in any manner they choose to do so. In fact, the FEPTOL circular also allowed them that freedom, but within the 180-day timeline. Now, that pressure to finalize this in within 180 days or the gone. company going to NCLT, that has gone. But I think the bankers that I've been able to speak to as well, heaved a sigh of relief, rather, mm. uh, that the one-day default rule is gone and the pressure to resolve mm -hmm. in 180 days is gone. But what everybody collectively them. agrees is that it did bring about a credit discipline. And with this mm. circular going away, mm. that is the biggest setback mm. coming in. Actually, that, that was the point, that uh, this one-day default was something which the borrowers thought mm. was a headache which is off. But the bankers thought that that's a very good thing because the number of SMA2, SMA1 cases came down. People who had the money were still making money on it in money market mutual funds and paying up on the 85th day or the 89th day. Now they were paying on the due date. And so they were actually happy about it. Uh, uh, and therefore, they lose a little bit in terms of liquidity of uh, uh, people paying back. So there are you know, two sides to it. Yeah. And yet, uh, as Mr. Shroff said and Ritu said, we have to read the judgment to see what all have been uh, outlawed. Yeah. But I think it's a big blow to regulation. Now, the next thing, you know, the courts may say even MPC is ultra-virus. I mean, where does this end? It is the right of the Reserve Bank to, uh, or right or rather, the duty to regulate loans, I mean, to take away this in such a, uh, you know, serious manner, in a fundamental manner, uh, seems, I, I, could, I could have understand, understood if they said that one, one day default was too unfair or the upgrading within the specified period was mm -hmm. too harsh. But to, to take away the entire circular looks like a big blow to the regulator. It uh, certainly distarnishes or reduces their moral authority in a way. Mr. Shroff pointed out, as, and you also saying, it, it, it's look, it seems and looks like a big blow. I mean, he said, I think he said that it's more perception rather than right. reality, but the perception matters, I mean, uh, in terms of the authority. Lata and uh, Ritu, thank you very much uh, for joining us and taking us through uh, the implications, the nuances of what the Supreme Court has done. We are still awaiting the judgment, and when we have the judgment, there'll be a lot more for us to discuss and uh, consider. We will take a very quick break. The first on the show, we come back. Ashwini is uh, going to be joining us a little later uh, than uh, when he joins at 1.30. But uh, that conversation with Ashwini on the market, his trades coming right up.